Proudly we hail. From New York City, where the American stage begins, here is another transcribed program with a cast of outstanding players and featuring Bill Quinn. Public service time has been made available by this station for your Army and your Air Force to bring you this story as proudly we hail the Army Chaplain Corps. This is the story of an army chaplain based on his own experiences. It shows us how these dedicated men are active in the safety of a stateside camp or in the danger of a Korean hill. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment after this important message. They shall not march alone. That was the determination of the church and clergy during World War II. The youth of America is on the march again. Whether they go alone or with the church beside them depends entirely upon how clergymen respond to the urgent plea for chaplains. The chaplain service depends on you to fill the needs at home and abroad. Will you consider this matter carefully? And if you can possibly be spared from your present assignment, make application now. Simply write to the office of the Chief of Chaplains, Washington 25, D.C. The need is now. Do not let them march alone. Write the office of the Chief of Chaplains, Washington 25, D.C. And now, with Bill Quinn in the role of Chaplain Lynch, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, The Courage You Gave Us. My name is Robert E. Lynch, the son of Mr. and Mrs. William A. Lynch of Glenwood Gardens, Yonkers, New York. I was ordained a Catholic priest in 1943 and volunteered for the Army Chaplain Corps in April 1945. I remember while I was preparing for the priesthood that I'd hoped and dreamed that my assignment would not be an ordinary one. I wanted a tough parish, a challenging parish and I found my challenge. For in the Army Chaplain Corps, the world was my parish. My job was to bring the men closer to God, to help them learn to live well, so that if God called them, they'd be able to die well. And if God spared them, they could return clear-eyed, clear-minded, and clear-hearted to serve God and their fellow man. Yes, Chaplain Lynch had his wish, a challenging parish. His first assignment was to the islands of the South Pacific and the varied problems of a peacetime army. As always, his door was open to help the men find solutions to their problems. As always, there were the special and regular religious activities, activities which helped guide the men toward a fuller, better life. But then, in the summer of 1950... <laughs> X3, communist army hit smashing blow in Korea. X3! Armed aggression in Korea, and into the breach rushed the armed might of the United Nations. With the American 8th Cavalry Regiment was Chaplain Lynch. How much he was with them is a matter of record. Listen. By direction of the President, and pursuant to authority contained in AR 60045, the Bronze Star Medal, First Oak Leaf Cluster, with the device, for a heroic achievement in connection with military operations against an enemy of the United States, is awarded to the following named officer, Chaplain Captain Robert E. Lynch, 
0932603, Chaplain Corps, United States Army. Headquarters and Headquarters Company, 8th Cavalry Regiment, 1st Cavalry Division, is cited for heroism in action against an armed enemy on 12 March 1951 near Odachi, Korea. I can't see why you shouldn't come this far, Father. No, oh, I climb like a cat, Doc. And Lynch is Irish for lynx. That's a cat. Nine lives. Ah. <laughs> Besides that stuff we heard back at Battalion Aid, it wasn't good news. No, it sure wasn't. A lot of men hit. Chinese are still holding the top of the hill. Oh, it's... It's cold. Plenty cold. Yeah, they're real heavy up there. And they're dishing it out heavy, too. Italian aide said that you medics would need help. You can say that again. Oh. Oh. Over there, Chaplain, first oh. stop. To the right, there? Yeah, near the big rock. Let's go. Oh, oh my legs. My legs. Okay, fella, your legs. Any place else? No. Just my legs. My legs. Chaplain, please help me roll him over on his back, huh? Right. Oh. Oh. Got it, Doc. Perfect. I gotta rip up these pants. All right, steady. Steady, fella. You'll be fixed up in a minute. Here, give him this short slug to get it down, huh? All right. Come on, fella. Let's get this down. My legs. It's... Legs. You'll be all right, Phil. Now, this might sting a little. Hold on. Ooh, ooh. I'll wrap them up. They'll be okay till you get back. It's all right to move them. I'll, uh, I'll take him back. You go on. I'll join you later. Swell. Better give him a half carry. Okay, fella. I'll help you get back. Can I walk? My legs... Are... It's like they're not... There. They're there, all right. Don't worry. Hang on now. We're going to try standing you up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh. 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 Good. Oh. There. Fine. Come on now. Throw your arm around my shoulder. Yeah. Yeah. Now lean against me. Yeah. Pull. Lean yeah. against me. Right against me. Yeah. That's it. Okay, fella. How's it now? Can't move him. Don't you try. Just lean against me. Think you can make it alone? I think so, Doc. She's not too heavy. Good. See you later. Good luck. So long, Doc. God bless you. Chaplain Lynch returned to the front lines and moved from wounded to wounded, aiding the hardworking medics, helping to evacuate casualties to rear areas encouraging and reassuring those remaining without thought of the danger to himself. His courageous devotion to duty highly inspired those present and was an instrumental factor in maintaining a high state of morale throughout the action. Chaplain Lynch's heroism reflects great credit on himself and the military service. As a chaplain, I was privileged to help the men out of various difficulties, help them solve complex problems. And sometimes I was fortunate enough to play a small part in loosening the intricate knots brought on by their own desire to lend a humane hand wherever they could. If this sounds at all critical, please don't misunderstand. I, I only want to point out that wherever our men are located, they automatically, practically without effort, get themselves happily involved in projects helping the helpless. The story of Curly is a good example. Oh, man. Wish we could move out in the open instead of through this stuff. Stamford, I feel a heap safer here. Yeah. It's worse than barbed wire. Now, what are you whispering for? Shh, keep it down, Tex. Keep it down. Okie dokie, okie doke. I just can't figure Well, what... it's simple. You see, the little fellas are off this hill and over on the next one. 
Oh, but there could be some left behind to pick us off. Reckon us traveling mouse-like through this here briar is a mighty good personal strategy, <laughs> eh? It sure is. <laughs> Wait. Drop. Tex. Uh-huh. Up ahead. To my left, see? Uh-uh. See that big bush with the flowers? Yeah, right purdy, too. Yeah, but take a look at that straggly one next to it. Yeah. Okay. Now look under it. Yeah. And just beyond it. What do you see? I reckon something's moving around. Like in a shell hole, huh? Right. Look, give me about two lengths for a start. Then follow me and keep me covered. Okie dokie. at him. He's all eyes. Got a smile like a morning glory. All eyes and bones. Chop, chop. Have no. No chop, chop. <laughs> he looks like he's had no chop, chop in a long time. Yeah, he looks real starved, real hungry. Yeah, he sure does. Hey, Tex, you, uh, you got anything to eat? Nothing but a box of crackers. Well, come on, break them out, break them out. Yeah. Not bad shape they're in. Here, boy. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa, wait a minute. You choke on all that at once. <laughs> easy, boy, easy now. Here, here, try some of this water to wash it down. Huh? Yeah, you better ration him on those crackers. Right, a little at a time. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, anyhow, he's a lot happier now. He sure is. What's that? Someone's coming. Look out. Hey, 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 what's going on here? Oh, oh Bernstein, <laughs> you scared the daylights out. Will you look at that? Where did you get him? Ah, I guess he was here all the time, wandering around. <laughs> Looking to me. Hey, kid, you want my chocolate? Hey, thank you, Bernie. What are you going to do with them? You can't leave them here. And you guys better get going yourselves. Most of the platoon has passed you already. <laughs> look at the kid put that stuff away. Look at the eyes on him. Yeah, he's all eyes. Ucky ducky. Ucky ducky. Hey, you better do something with the kid and fast. You can't leave him here. Yeah, I guess. I uh, guess we'll have to send him back. Get him to an orphanage or something. That kid needs plenty of feeding. Yeah, but you guys can't take him back, and he'll never get back by himself. Hey, wait, Bernie. Did you see the chaplain around anywhere? Father Lynch? Yeah, he was at the bottom of the hill with his jeep. He's going to follow our platoon up to just ahead of the next one. Okay, now look. Pass the word down for him to cut over in our direction, will you? Okay, Stanford. We'll turn the kid over to him. Look at him. <laughs> He's a cute character, all right. What he needs is milk, eggs, cereal. And heavy cream and strawberries. Hey, Bernie, come on, man. Pass the word. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, Eddie! Eddie! Pass the word down for Father Lynch to head this way. Tell him to look for Stanford in Texas. They're waiting. Well, see you guys, and hey, you with the mouthful. See you later. <laughs> so long, Bernie. So long, Bernie. Ah, uh, hmm. You know, Tex, uh, I've been thinking we got to give this kid a name. Well, most kids has them. For that haircut, we could call him Baldy. No. <laughs> Why not? He's got hair. Uh, how about cue ball? No. Well, why not? That's what all yeah, I thought. Yeah, it ain't respectful. <sighs> all right, then. How about Curly? Well, ain't too bad. Good. His name is Curly. Hey, Curly. You got a name now. How do you like that? Mm. Curly. Okay, okay. Well, <laughs> after this mess is over, I'm going to be a charter member of the Honorable Order of Mountain Goats. Hey, brother. Hi, brother. Hi. And... Hey. <laughs> What's this? A prisoner? Well, not exactly. We found him in this hole here, and he was pretty hungry. Uh-huh. Got his belly full of chocolate and crackers and water. Good. <laughs> Poor kid. Hello there, Buster. Okay, okay. <laughs> His name's Curly, Father. Good name. 
Well, I guess you fellas want me to take him back to an orphanage. Well... I can do that right away. My jeep's at the bottom of this young mountain. Shouldn't be up here anyway. I'll have him at an orphanage in less than an hour. Oh, well, you see, Best Father... Best place for him, too. You see, we... Good thing you found a little fellow. Curly, huh? Give him a name. Now, he'll be all right at the orphanage. I'll get those dirty rags off him and get all cleaned up and he'll be happy. Oh, come on, little fella. Come on, get in my arms. Now, I'll heave you up on my shoulder. Come on. There. <laughs> sure you understand. Now, up on my shoulder. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's a boy. And off we go for the orphanage. Bill Quinn featured in the role of Chaplain Lynch in the proudly we hail production, The Courage You Gave Us, will return in just a moment for the second act. The altar was strange. It came out of a suitcase and was set up on the hood of a jeep. The church, too, was different. A field marked by shell craters. Just the day before, it had been under mortar fire. Overhead, the leaves rustled. The congregation had assembled under a group of trees, necessary camouflage because of enemy planes. Preacher and people were in uniform. The whole setting was unique, and yet, in essence, it was like a service back home. The same divine truths, the old familiar hymns, the prayers of the ancient church. It meant a lot to these men to have the chaplain there, to be reminded of the Lord, to sing God's praises. Priests, ministers, and rabbis are needed now to conduct services for men of their faiths in the troubled areas of the world. If you are a clergyman under 38 years of age and have college and seminary training, write today, right now, to the office of the Chief of Chaplains, Washington 25, D.C. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Courage You Gave Us. The greatest battle a soldier fights is his personal conquest of fear. And many times the chaplain, like Chaplain Lynch, is right there on the spot to help. That's it. That's it, Father. For an hour now, it's been going on like that. The medics are there already, Lieutenant. Every minute for more than an hour. They got young Teddy Gordon, a terrific little corporal. Every minute. Yes, I know, I know, but the... The medics are working. Ray Johnson was hit. Best top kick I've ever known. Good man. Good man. Good man. Yet, get this, Father. He had a chicken farm all paid up. All paid up and waiting for him. Father, everybody talks about chicken farm. Everybody plans on one like, 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 like somebody wants a, a weekly newspaper or a small delicatessen in a busy neighborhood. Everybody dreams like that, Father. Everybody. God bless him. Ray dreamt like all of us do. Always about the future. What happens to a man's dreams, Father? We're here because of the dreams and prayers of our people. And our own dreams and prayers. There go more dreams, Father. Several sets of dreams. They got us zeroed in and they know it. They're not just lucky. We're zeroed in and... And now it won't be long before another wave comes screaming over that ridge. Three waves have been beaten back already. But every wave gets worse. Three, you say? Seems like a dozen. The next one will be beaten back, too. We've got to. We need this post. We need it bad, but how much can the men take? I know. It's nerve-wracking. It's more than that, Father. Look out there. Look at the men's faces. Look at their eyes. Look at them. Every man out there is scared stiff. Not just normal fright. I know. How about yourself? Myself? I don't know, Father. I... I don't know. I do know I'm real scared. Fine. That makes two of us. You have courage and you have a heart. And God be with you. I'm going out and talk with the boys. Oh, Father, no, no. no better stay here. I... I didn't mean you It's should. okay, Lieutenant. Don't worry. It's 
okay, Lieutenant. Don't worry. Chaplain Lynch made a tour of the hell of that battlefield, giving new spirit and will to live to the desperate men holding that position. His bravery was... But let's listen to the way one squad leader described it over his walkie-talkie to command. Eagle One reporting to Crow's Nest. Lightning steady and striking pay dirt. Hello, Crow's Nest. Things have been bad here. Men felt lower than a worm's belly. I felt the next time those screaming maniacs hit us, we'd be through. Then a guy who must have the legs of Jesse Owens and an extra pair of lungs starts running around, talking to the men. He was all over the place. We could see him everywhere. He was armed, all right. Real big weapons. Faith. And a heart like a house. He kept this up from man to man. Every time he left a guy, that guy would be laughing, uh, grinning, and ready for anything. Grinning and ready for anything. Yes, Father Lynch's heroism did not go unnoticed. Official recognition was recorded, too, in the peaceful calm of an auditorium somewhere. By direction of the President, and pursuant to authority contained in AR 60045, the Silver Star Medal for Gallantry in Action is awarded to the following named officer. Chaplain, Captain Robert E. Lynch, 0932603, Chaplain Corps, United States Army, Headquarters, 8th Cavalry Regiment, is cited for gallantry in action against an armed enemy on 5 and 6 June 1951 near Yonchon, Korea. The enemy was subjecting the forward observation post to an intense artillery barrage, and Chaplain Lynch fearlessly moved about the area inspiring all present by his courage and calmness, giving encouragement to the frightened men. His voluntary decision to remain in the danger area despite the heavy enemy fire indicated extraordinary courage and devotion to duty. Chaplain Lynch's gallantry reflects great credit on himself and the military service. sometimes difficult, even bewildering, to accept honors awarded for the performance of one's duty. But there are unexpected rewards for a chaplain, Protestant, Jewish, or Catholic. Like a letter I received from a young ex-soldier written to me just this past Christmas Eve. I am very happy to know that you returned safely. I thank God that you are here. You may not know me, but I served with you in the 1st Cavalry Division. And I remember when you came to the outfit. You inspired us, gave us the confidence we needed. I can't explain what it was, Father, but you made everything easy. That time you spent with Fox Company, I'll never forget. I hope, Father, you'll answer this letter. I'd really appreciate it very much, because I was there when you said Mass on Christmas last year, and how you made us feel that everything was all right. I'll sign off now, Father. But I hope I'll hear from you soon. I was with F Company, 8th Cavalry Regiment. And I'll always remember the courage you gave us. Thank you, Bill Quinn, for a very stirring portrayal. And in just a moment, after a brief but important message, I'd like to introduce the man upon whose experiences we base this story, 
the real-life Chaplain Robert E. Lynch. Pick up a coin. Stamped on it, you'll find the words, In God We Trust. Not in our wealth, not in our natural resources, not in our might. In God We Trust. That spirit of humility, that dependence upon God, has always characterized our nation. National emergencies make us even more aware of our need for heaven's help. America's fighting men look for divine direction and seek religious leadership from their chaplains, men trained in the truths of God, men aware of human needs, men dedicated to service. The Army is calling for more such men, clergymen who will volunteer their services during this emergency. The office of the Chief of Chaplains, Washington 25, D.C., will be glad to furnish details. If you are an ordained clergyman under 38 years of age and with college and seminary training, write to the office of the Chief of Chaplains, Washington 25, D.C. And now, Chaplain Lynch, welcome on Proudly We Hail. Ken, I want to add my thanks and congratulations to you and to everyone connected with this presentation. Hearing this story has made me relive not the happiest, because there was too much suffering on the part of our men to be the happiest, but by all means the most memorable time of my life. Just to recall living, eating, and sleeping with these outstanding and wonderful soldiers, every one of whom is truly a hero, is a grand memory. And as a sequel to this story, and as an example of the kindness which is so much the part of our soldiers' hearts, I would like to tell you that Curly is being taken care of in an orphanage in Seoul, and that a donation made up by the soldiers involved in this episode will make it possible for Curly to come to the United States when he reaches the age of 21. Okie dokie. And to all of you within the sound of my voice, I would like to say that if you are a qualified priest, minister, or rabbi, I heartily recommend to you a tour of duty in the Army Chaplain Corps. Write for full information to the Office of the Chief of Chaplains, Washington 25, D.C. I hope that tomorrow's mail to the Office of the Chief of Chaplains will be bulging with urgently needed applications of clergymen to follow their men wherever they may go in this present emergency. I hope so too, Chaplain Lynch, and thank you very much. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and United States Air Force Recruiting Service. This program featured Bill Quinn as Chaplain Lynch. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking and inviting you to tune in the same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hailed.